Hey everybody, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, today I want to uh, answer some questions that I had on a previous video about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K uh, and how to do time lapses. had lots of questions about the shutter angle and how that really affects the videos. Uh, I didn't really know the answers to some of these things, so I had to do some experiments. So in this video, we're going to kind of dive into some of those experiments and you'll get to see some of the results for yourself. So to get started with this video, I took the camera outside and pointed it up at the clouds again. Uh, on a day that we had some pretty good fast-moving clouds to try to see what would happen with this. Uh, sadly, there's not a lot of difference in this. Uh, it's not quite enough definition in it to be able to see if there's much motion blur or not. Uh, but regardless, here's some uh, samples that I took uh, with the 360-degree shutter. So I even did a few samples where I switched the settings from shutter angle over to shutter speed and I did one here at 1 24th shutter speed just so you can see so as suspected this really is the minimum that you're allowed to go on this camera so this is what these results look like so another question that I got was what is a good speed setting for your time lapse for clouds and I usually do two to three seconds sometimes up to five seconds depending upon the speed of the clouds this kind of gives that uh, that motion that you expect to see in a cloud time lapse so for this one just as an example I set it to 10 frames which means it's going to shoot one frame for every 10 frames and this is a pretty good setting this is the minimum uh, per frame setting on this camera beyond this it goes to one second and so for all of these cloud samples I used an ND16 filter this time and this really helped with uh, cutting the sun out and allowing some of these rays to pop through the clouds this is a pretty neat effect and you can really only get this with an ND filter and of course what better way to pass the time as you are shooting a time lapse but to fly the drone so here's a quick little drone shot of me overhead shooting this time lapse all right, so the clouds weren't really doing what I wanted to, to do here for the demonstration, so I switched over and uh, used a drumstick here uh, just so I could wave it at a pretty uh, consistent speed in front of the camera and I could test and see what the results are. So for these tests, I wanted to hit three different shutter angles here. I wanted to do the 360, I wanted to do the normal 180, and then I wanted to do the minimum, which is 11.5, I believe. So here you see some examples from each of these, and you can see that with the 360 degree, you're going to get the most motion blur, and then as we get down to the 11 degree, then you're going to see m more detail of the stick itself. So next I thought I would shift over to the entire drum set so you could see a little bit more motion and we could experiment more with the motion blur for a time lapse here. I know this is kind of a funny thing to do a time lapse of someone playing a drum set, but actually it's pretty interesting results and I may wind up using some of this for a music video in the future. So you can see here I tried this one uh, at one frame every five frames so that it was a little bit more like a normal video. Uh, and it looks pretty neat. This is at the 360 degree shutter angle. So and then I will change some settings and this next one I will do uh, with the same 360 degree shutter angle. Uh, and this one I'll do one frame every two frames. And this is the lowest setting that the camera has for a time lapse. And this is basically skipping a frame in a normal video. And this gets some pretty interesting results. So as you can see here with the 360 degree shutter, there's quite a bit of motion blur. The sticks are really blurring around and you can see them just kind of waving in the air. And so in our next sample here, I shifted it to the more standard 180 degree uh, shutter and then still at the one frame every two frames. And this is a little bit more like what you would normally see, the motion blur here. You're seeing the stick move up and down. So and then we shifted over to the 11 and a half degree shutter and this is still at the one frame every two frames, um, basically skipping a frame here. And you can see that this is a neat effect because it's, it's almost like the stick is never even hitting the drum. Uh, in most cases because you're only grabbing every other frame here. So this is a pretty neat way to fake a stop motion effect and I may try some experiments with this in the future. Alright well there you go there's some more examples of the settings on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and how to do time lapses. I hope that this answers some questions for people out there and uh, if you have any other questions leave them in the comments and I'll do some more experiments and make another video to try to answer those. So if you enjoyed this video, please uh, give it a like and make sure you subscribe. So this channel is all about finding the simplest ways to make some cool looking films and music and how to do this type of thing in your spare time. So if that sounds great, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.